could not cure it. A win Sunday over the Mets could not hide it. The right knee of Randy Johnson still didn't feel right. Wednesday, Arizona announcing that its four-time Cy Young winner will have arthroscopic knee surgery. He's going to miss three to six weeks. The procedure involves the cleaning up of debris around the knee, which is causing swelling. Some good news? Kurt Schilling comes back on Saturday. D-backs five games under 500 and hosting Florida. To the action, Luis Gonzalez. He went two for three, two RBIs. For the love of the Budweiser hot seat, Miguel Batista. What about him on the mound? He hasn't given up a home run in 76 innings entering Wednesday as we flash back to August 17th, 2002. Sammy Sosa, the last person to hit a homer off of Batista, launching it and landing. Top of the second. Mike Lowell's first at bat against Batista. He gets a hold of this one. But the ballpark keeps it in. Top of the fifth. Mike Lowell, second at bat against Batista. Batista's streak of 80 innings without giving up a home run is over. But he did pitch seven innings with six Ks in a victory for Arizona. Dusty back in the bay after winning the series opener in his former home, Pack Bell Park. It was 2 0 Giants when Barry Bonds takes Matt Clement deep. Number seven for Barry. It's 4 0 Giants against Dusty's Cubs. Same score, bottom six. Bonds again off of Clement. And he gets wet. This is what happens when you pitch to this man. I mean, of all people, Dusty should know that. Number eight for uh, Barry Bonds. Uh, Joe Morgan. Has Dusty Baker learned his lesson, you think? I think going into this series, Dusty Baker was in a tough situation. He had managed Barry Bonds and watched how other people pitched him. Barry had told him not to walk him when he played, and all of a sudden, he's got to make those decisions. Tonight, they've tried to test Barry Bonds, and it's not a good idea. I think in the future, Dusty Baker will kind of adhere to what every other manager has done, and that is to pitch around Barry Bonds. Well, how about in the near future, Joe? Would Dusty pitch to Bonds in his very next at bat? Same score, bottom eight. Bonds facing Mark Guthrie. Oh, boy, he did pitch to him, but uh, it's foul. So close to a hash trick of homers. 5-0 the final. Giants win. Mariners dropped a bagel on the Yankees in their series opener at the stadium. First batter in this one, Ichiro pops up. Eric Almonte going out to make the catch, except he forgets to do the part where you make the catch. E6, Ichiro running hard, makes it to second. Bottom first, no score, two on, two out, Hideki Matsui. That's just going to be a line drive when you read it in the paper in the morning. Off the glove of Carlos Guillen, Todd Zeal scores one zip, Matsui the RBI. A couple of batters later, the bases are chucked for Raul Mondesi. That is a drive. Randy Wynn running back there. He's got one of them gloves, too, and apparently, oh, boy. It's allergic to leather. Ball goes over. Grand slam. Modesty's eighth homer. He's hitting 347, 241 last year with the Yanks. Top seven with two out. Ichiro pops it up. Alfonso Soriano says, go away, Almonte. I'll take this one. Well, look at that. E4 run scores. Ichiro 0 for 5, but on base twice. Top eight. Mariners down 5-2 with the bases. Chuck Dan Wilson bloops one to right center. Edgar Martinez scores. Ditto Mike Cameron. 5-4. Mariners only down one. Let's warm up Mariano Rivera. We might need him to get a save. Well, luckily the Yanks would get three of their own in the eighth. And here in the eighth, Todd Zeal finally gets his team out of the inning. Well, I, wait, got it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Not Soriano. Mon and here comes our man Rivera. Not a save situation, but called up and put off the DL on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, he comes up with the save. John Mayberry to Deki Matsu Rivera. An inning, one hit, one and run, one walk, two Ks as the Yanks win at eight to five. Royals, Red Sox, Ramiro Mendoza, and the committee. Yippee! In action against the Royals. Score tied top of the ninth against Carlos Beltran. Beltran off the green monster. Carlos Fabla scores. Beltran one for four, 184. Mendoza gets into trouble. Time for a new committee member. Brandon Lyon now in with Mendoza. Facing Ken Harvey. Harvey, the single that scores two. Royals take a 4-2 lead. Bottom nine now. Mike McDougal now in, facing Nomar Garcia Parra with a man on. Nomar nearly gets hit in the head. Todd Walker takes second. Later in the same at bat, Nomar gets plumped on the elbow by McDougal. So we got two on, three batters later. McDougal facing Shea Hillenbrand, and he gets Hillenbrand on his elbow. That's it for McDougal. What a shot. DJ Carrasco in for the Royals facing Johnny Damon. Damon pops it up. It's foul. Brent Main thinks he's under it. 
I don't know, maybe Kenny Main could have made that catch. New life for Damon. Two pitches later, Carrasco hits him on the foot. The Royals will lead a second team in Major League history to hit three batters in the ninth. Score tied, Carrasco against Jason Veritek. On the ground, nice swing. That's routine for you. Manny Ramirez scores. The Red Sox win. Are the Royals unraveling? They've lost three in a row. Bob holding up the A's and White Sox game in Chicago. Remember when we flash back, December 31st, 1988, Eagles Bears, the Fog Bowl at Soldier Field. Or remember this, May 25th, 1988, Cup Finals, Oilers, Bruins playing in the fog. Or January 24th, 92, a horse race in the fog. Hey, they forgot Sabres Flyers, 75. I remember that. Back to the game, top of the fifth, one on Eric Burns, the blooper. No one sees it. Burns will wind up with a triple. Ramon Hernandez will score. The A's are up 1-0 after that. Hey, I got a good idea. Let's, let's delay the game. There's fog. Fog didn't affect Mark Mulder. Getting Jose Valentin to fly out. Mark Mulder improving to 4-1. He's a Chicago native, you know. Just four hits allowed, six Ks. Double Rays and Twins, and this is going to hurt. Bottom first, 1-1 one, one tie, two on for Torrey Hunter. There is no I in team. There are two eyes in Torrey. Three-run shot. Twins up 4-1. Hunter's third. Next batter, Bobby Kilty. Hi, have a welt. That's not good. Benches come out. Jeremy Davis issues a warning to both teams, and Brad Radke ignores the warning. He hits Toby Hall. He's ejected immediately. Later in the sixth, Johan Santana pitching to Marlon Anderson. You don't cross an Anderson. Yeah, I know that. Sometimes you do. You hit him in the back. Look, no retaliation. Anderson to first, but no ejection. Bottom six near Beerbrot. He goes Sean Estes on Corey Koski. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Pinellas thrown out. Beer brats tossed. Five ejections in all. Four hit batsmen. Twins win 8 5. Braves, winners of 12 of the last 14, back in Houston. Mike Hampton looking for his first win as a Brave. No score. Jeff Ken. Look at Hampton. We know how great a fielder he is. And he makes the play from his knees. Top four, men on first and second. Braves up 2 0. Hampton, not only a good fielder, but the man can hit. Scores Vinny Castilla. Braves up. Three to nothing. Top of the six with the score five one Braves. Brandon Puffer intentionally walks Raphael for call. Bags full. Next batter, Marcus Giles. Oh, in the way of that pitch. Braves up six one. Bags still loaded. Next batter. Oh, the always dangerous Gary Sheffield. All Chef did was go four for four and score four runs with three RBI. And he's hit 340. Braves up seven to one. Bag still full. Next batter, Chipper Jones. That's hard and that's off the wall. Furcal, Giles, and Sheffield all score. Chipper ends up at second. Great effort for Chipper. He was three for five, and the Braves had an 11 to one victory. Phillies and Dodgers bums a chance to end the month at 500. This will help. Fred McGriff, oh, Sente Padilla's third homer of the year, number 480 on his career. Wolf, wolf for the crime dog. Dodgers up one nothing. Bottom six, couple on for Adrian Beltre, and he gets some power in that stick. Only hits a good one, raced his average clean up to 216. His fourth, Dodgers up 4 0. Let's go top eight, two on. Nobody out on Dallas Perez pitching. Jimmy Rollins, oh, froze. Next batter is David Bell, and he strikes out as well. Half a swing, whole strike. Dodgers win a 4 0. Perez, 11 Ks in the game, went eight and two thirds. Eric Gagne came on to get the final out. Beer Makers hosting the Expos, and it's time to play. Name that player, which, of course, would be difficult even if you do live in Milwaukee or Montreal. Who is the Expos' speedy center fielder? He's Andy Chavez, and he bunts in the fourth. Ball gets away from Wes Helms. He goes to second. He would later score. Who's the Expos' left fielder? It's Brad Wilkerson. Oh, yeah, it's Brad Wilkerson. He hits a single. He gets two. He went three for four, two RBIs. That goes up now, eight to three. How about, can you name this brewer? Former first round draft pick of the Cubs in 93, Texas Longhorn, did we give it away? Brooks Kieschnick, oh, yeah. who on Wednesday afternoon pitched in a minor league game, then called up to the big club, and now he's pinch hitting against the Spos. And whether you're pitching or hitting, it's all about striking out. Oh, well, now you know more about Brooks Kish. The closer for the Expo, six saves, and his name is Rocky Biddle, and he gets another one. Jeff Jenkins, the big miss. Can you guess who the winner is? No. There it is. Actually, I wasn't Expos, paying attention. 9-5. Expo's 9-5. Mets Cardinals.
Second inning, something's different about Fernando Vina. Let's flash back Sunday. The slump in second baseman was sporting his trademark goatee, but a new look for Vina in his first game back since. Oh, would it snap his skid? One on, nobody out for Vina. I say it does. A two-run homer off of Pedro Estacio. Vina's first homer in 501 at-bats, heading the league's longest active homerless straight cards up 7-0. Bottom four, Pools facing Estacio now with one on, one out. That would be Albert Pujols. You recognize him. Oh, he's been lifting. His fifth. He goes three for four with three RBI. Cards go on to win 13 to four. The first time in Met team history they've allowed at least 13 runs in back-to-back -back games. Reds, Rockies, the Reds built Ryan Dempster a 5-0 lead, but he got himself into trouble in the second. 5-2. He already walked four in the inning. He walks Lonnie Belliard with a bases full, scoring Jose Hernandez. Next batter, Chris Richard. And Dempster, what does he do? He walks him two, and that scores Greg Norton. It's a 5-4 game. Manager Bob Boone pulls Dempster. Why? He allowed seven runs, six walks in an inning and a third. Hey, right, Reds winning 9-8 when this happens. Jose Guillen knocks the grounder down the line. That scores Adam Dunn and Austin Kearns. Guillen to second. Reds go on to win. Guillen, Kearns, and Adam Dunn combined to total nine hits in the victory. Now it's time for the Budweiser hot seat with Luis Gonzalez. And Mike. Texas trying to string together three straight wins for the first time this season. Four times they won two in a row, and well, that'll help. Juan Gonzalez's ninth homer had eight all of last year in 70 games. Top nine, Michael Young, much insurance. He makes an 8-2 lead, an 11-2 lead. Three-run shot, his second Rangers. 50 homers as a team this season, most in baseball. They win at 11 to 3. Angels and Indians. Cleveland's lost seven in a row. Longest jig in a decade, and it's going to be eight. Brad Fulmer swinging 3 0 against Brian Anderson, and E. Green lights it into the seats. Tribe matched the 90s team with their eight straight loss.